When Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, many had begun to question their fundamental assumptions about Russia. From my perspective, as somebody who is originally from Russia, somebody who was following Russia and Russia in the Middle East for most of my professional career, Russia's invasion of Ukraine was not at all surprising. The Great Power Competition Program was created shortly before Russia's invasion of Ukraine. I'm Anna Borshevskaya, Senior Fellow at the Diane and Guilford Glazer Foundation Program on Great Power Competition and the Middle East. I think the goal of the Great Power Competition Program at the Washington Institute is to serve as a sounding board for policymakers and provide background, context, and policy options moving forward for the U.S. government in competing with China and Russia in the Middle East and abroad. Hi, I'm Grant Rumley. I am the Goldberger Fellow at the Washington Institute. I'm Michael Singh. I'm Managing Director of the Washington Institute and Lane Swig Senior Fellow. When we talk about great power competition, what we really mean is essentially the competition between the United States on the one hand, which is trying to uphold the post-World War II international order uh, and all the rules and norms that come with that. For example, the norm against um, violating the territorial integrity of neighbors, violating the sovereignty of neighbors. With the 9-11 terrorist attacks against the United States in particular, uh, the main trajectory of American foreign policy had focused towards counterterrorism uh, as opposed to geopolitics. Um, but uh, American adversaries, uh, chiefly Russia and China, had never stopped uh, looking at geopolitics as, the, as a permanent feature of international relations. In other words, for Russia and China, geopolitics are eternal. I've been working on the question of Chinese strategy in the Middle East for over 10 years. Um, and I think that we have actually been able to see for years now China transforming itself not just from uh, an economic player in the Middle East, but to one which has diplomatic aspirations and one which has security aspirations. Now it's much more evident. Now it's much more in the headlines. But we at the Washington Institute has been, have been focused on this uh, for years, actually. When I started studying Russia in the Middle East well over a decade ago, uh, many told me not to bother prior to Russia uh, going militarily into Syria in September 2015. There were very few scholars in Washington who had uh, relevant recent policy uh, analysis, in-depth policy analysis, specifically on Russia in the Middle East. Uh, everybody was scrambling to understand why Putin went into Syria, uh, what, were, what were Russian interests, and there were simply very few experts on that topic at the time. A lot of the, our partners uh, in the Middle East do not view their relationship with China and Russia uh, the same way we do. Uh, and so for a lot of them, China is their number one trading partner. Their economic indicators point towards China, uh, while we remain the primary security partner of choice. You know, I think the conventional wisdom is that U.S.-China competition, or, or so-called great power competition in general, this is something that requires us to shift our attention to Asia. This is something that will happen largely in Asia. And of course, Asia is the primary theater for U.S.-China competition. Um, and I think that, again, the conventional wisdom is, well, the Middle East, where we've been focused heavily for the last 20 years, is a distraction from that competition. I, I think that conventional wisdom is wrong. In fact, what we have seen throughout history is that the Middle East, for better or worse, is a theater or an arena for great power competition. The United States has enormous interest uh, at stake in the Middle East, so does China, and inevitably you'll have uh, a competition for influence and a competition um, uh, of other sorts in the Middle East. You know, whether, whether we like it or not, great power competition has already taken place in the Middle East. And so it's important for TWI to have this program on great power competition in the region because it allows us to bring to bear our TWI's decades of proven experience and expertise on the Middle East to an issue that's a uh, top priority for the U.S. government.